it's Will, or hashtag baking actor. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make some delicious cream cheese lemon curd danishes. Now, I know the curd part doesn't sound amazing, but they are really, really delicious. First thing you need is yeast. Um, I have a quarter cup of warm water that I got out of the tap, just warm water out of the tap and one packet of yeast. Now I have it in this little ramekin because I actually bought a big thing so I just measured it out. Two and a half, tea, two and a quarter teaspoons. That goes in there into the warm water to wake up the yeast. Whisk it around just a little bit to get that going. Now that needs to go for about three minutes before we add our other ingredients to it. Meanwhile, what we're gonna do is get our butter and flour mixture together. So, the way that the flour and the butter go together is just a little bit different in this Danish dough rather than in the croissant dough. If you watch my croissant video, you know it takes like 19 hours to get this process going. Mmm, you can smell that yeast. It's, uh, it's great. So, it smells like yeast. Like, I don't know. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour in my food processor, and then I have um, cut into cubes, basically, my butter mixture like I did with my um, tart dough. So I'm going to stick that in here real fast. Okay. Now, this is the fun part. We're going to pulse. Fine. We don't want to completely pulse it to where it's sand, as if we've done in other recipes. Nine, ten. That looks pretty good. Okay. We'll leave this here for just a second and get the rest of our wet ingredients together. Uh, yeast has started to bloom. So the next thing that we put in here is a quarter cup of sugar. Egg at room temperature. And I like to whisk and get everything incorporated as you go along. Teaspoon of salt. And then a half a cup of milk. Now, like I said, I just brought this to room temperature while I was prepping everything. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't need to be scalding or anything. It just needs to be at room temperature. Pour that in here. Whisk it all together. Okay, so I've got all of my ingredients and my wet mixture here. And now, this first process, you just pour all of your dry ingredients well, the butter and the flour, I should say, in here. And then I'm using my little friend, my spurtle here, and I'm just going to bring the dough together. All right, this is one of those doughs where it's gonna just look like a kind of a mess. It's okay. We don't want it to completely come together yet. You just want all of the dry ingredients, the flour and the butter, to have mixed into the wet ingredients and make sure there's not uh, a lot of wet ingredients left on the bowl. Now, here is the trick that I found. We need to get this in the refrigerator so that this butter doesn't completely get soft and ooze out. So, cover this and put it in the fridge for a minimum of four hours. Okay, so it's the next day. I waited about 12 hours or so, maybe 13, um, for my dough to puff up and I've let it sit on the counter for about a couple minutes just while I was getting everything ready here. And you can see now that it's real puffy. Like if you push down it, it puffs up. So I floured my surface here and it's a, it's a shaggy mess, as they say. But we're gonna pull the dough out of here and it does stick together. So we've done a good job with getting it stick together. Okay. I learned from Lauren Groveman, because I research, right? I learned from Lauren Groveman, never stick your hand in your flower pot. Flower pot. Dust the top here with some flour. 
so that it doesn't stick to your rolling pin because this butter is very sticky. Then middle out, it's real shaggy. It's real shaggy, but you can see all the butter flakes and it's really cool. But take your dough scraper and loosen up the sides here. Stay together, all right? I'm gonna do a third and then pull again a third. So we've made like a little, this would be like if we flipped it over, I'll be a Chipotle burrito <laughs> of butter and yeast. Not so appetizing yet. Okay, pull that all up. I'm gonna set it on top of my dough scraper and put a little bit more flour down here because it's still got some butter in there that's gonna stick. Okay, and then this is your first turn. So you turn it and repeat this process. We do this three times. I'll show you what it looks like after three times. And the dough is starting to talk to me now. Usually it's just that voices in my head and talk to me. But the dough is starting to say, hey, I've had enough of this waking up. Okay? But it's, and then I say to the dough, you've got one more time. <laughs> but basically, once the dough starts to pull back on you, it's, it's about had it. It says, I've had enough. I do not want to be rolled anymore. Okay? But, so this is the, the last lamination here. And I'll post a picture in the video of the butter so you can see the flicks of butter. And it is truly amazing that that butter just doesn't cream and melt and absorb into the rest of the dough. I'm going to fold this up, put it in the refrigerator for 30 minutes, and then I'll show you how to make the filling for what goes inside our puff pastry. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the um, cream cheese insert into our danishes, okay? This is just an 8-ounce package of cream cheese. I'm going to divide it up a little bit here. Now, I've added in a third cup of sugar, teaspoon of vanilla, and I like to incorporate everything as I go along, but teaspoon of sour cream and a teaspoon of lemon juice just for a little bit of tang in here against all the sugar. I'm gonna put this in here. Mix it up. I'm gonna say hello to the people. Oh, no, blaspheme! I didn't have the Danishes done in time for him to have breakfast, so. We got donuts, that's okay. okay. So, I've got my cream cheese mixture in here. It's pretty creamy. Set it aside, and then I'll show you the next process. Okay, so I let my dough rest in the refrigerator for about a half hour or so while I prepped everything else, and I uh, made the insert into the danishes. Now, you say insert, but I'll show you in just a second. So, what I'm going to do, because I want to do two batches, is cut my dough in half. And it's not that I need to do two batches, it's just that I can't, I'm not that fast. So, I'm cutting it in half, and I'm going to put the second half back into the refrigerator, wrapped up. So, now I have one lamination here, basically, so I'm going to use this last lamination and roll out here. And I like to kind of seal up my dough and start sealing it up a little bit, just so that it goes evenly. Okay. Take my rolling pin, dusted it. It's not as tacky as it was before because all the butter has kind of absorbed some of the flour that I was using before. So, wake up the dough! That's one, nearly two, and this way as well, one, nearly two. Okay? So, now, I've got a lot of little friends today. This is my next little friend, okay? So, my straighter side is over here. Pardon me, that was a donut. My straighter side is over here. So I'm gonna measure six inches, make a slit. I have pretty much a perfect square. My favorite is this shape. So if you take your square and cut it into a triangle, 
what you get here is a triangle. Then just cut a little slit about, mm, I don't know, an inch away from the edge, up on both sides, about that far, I should say about that far. Can you see it? Great. Then unfold it. And before I stuck this in the, uh, the refrigerator, I should mention this. I'll make sure that I put this in the comments below. I beat an egg and milk so that it became room temperature. And then I'm just going to baste this, basically. But what this does is acts like glue to hold the pastry together. Okay, now, slit in is just away from me. I'm going to take the um, slit end, sorry, turn it around. I'm going to take the slit end and bring it to the corner that's not cut. If you need to cut just a little bit more, you can. And then the same, fold it over to the next little slit. Okay, so what you have here is basically a star-ish, but the most important thing is you have a little well right here for the um, insert to the day. Don't get the egg wash in the filling because mm, that can kind of get a little, eh, it probably is okay, it cooks, it's fine. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and base all of these. with. Okay, so I've got my cream cheese and my lemon curd here and you have to dirty a couple of spoons, but it will totally be worth it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my cream cheese and dollop it in there. You could mix the lemon curd and cream cheese if you wanted to, but I like to use the lemon curd for a lot of other things. So um, I didn't want to contaminate either one of them. Just a little dollop. Then, same goes for your lemon curd, just a little dollop, and it might be, yeah, it's liquidy enough that it'll go off of your spoon. Now this doesn't seem like a lot, but what's going to happen is once this puffs up, the well that we've made with all of these puff pastries will hold this in because it will puff up way faster then this will get liquidy. They're delicious. All right. Now, let these proof mm, at room temperature for about 20 minutes or so, and then you put them in a 400 degree oven, and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, so. This is what they look like after they're out of the oven. They're giant and huge and colossal and they're great for breakfast. So while they were cooling for about 10 minutes, I mixed, uh, sifted some confectioner sugar, a cup of confectioner sugar, and um, put two tablespoons of heavy cream. If you don't have heavy cream, milk will totally be fine, but just watch about how much you put. I put two tablespoons of heavy cream and then a half a tablespoon of milk so that I get the consistency that I want. I use my trick with my parchment paper and put it underneath my cooling racks. And now we drizzle on. See how great it is? We drizzle on this onto the final finished Danish. They look almost too good to eat. Almost. Remember, I'm Will, or hashtag Baking Actor. Make sure that you follow me on Pinterest, Instagram. All my social media links will be below. Like, comment, share. Make sure that you let people know about what I'm doing. And let me know if you have an easier way to make danishes. This took me about 45 minutes to finish. Um, so let me know uh, what you like. Bye.